video, I'm going to give a brief overview of how you can package your Go application using Docker and run it in a local Kubernetes cluster and actually access the application. So I'm assuming you have Docker for desktop installed, whether you are using Windows or Mac. So you can download Docker for desktop from this website here, from docker.com. So this is my simple application in Go, which is basically an HTTP server. So in my main function, I'm handling using this handler called homepage. And this simply prints welcome to the homepage. And then I'm doing HTTP listen and serve at this port. So once this is deployed, you're going to see something like this. You can access it at a particular port and you will see this. So I'm going to show how to make it happen. So first step is once you have your Go application, in, in my case, it is just this main file. Then the first step after that is to create a Docker image out of it. Before I move forward, I'm going to go through some basic Docker terminologies. The first is container. As we know, it is a self-contained uh, running application. And this runs an instance of an image. So what is an image? Image is, at its core, it's a binary, which contains the packaged version of your app. So basically, it's a template of your application. Then comes Docker file. So Docker file actually has the definition of the image. So it is actually a file. Inside that, you write the definition of an image, and then you can execute a certain command to actually create the image then you can run the image to have your container running one more thing i want to go over is docker hub so this is basically an app store for docker images so it's a website called hub.docker.com and when you create your image you have two options you can have it locally so that you can run the image on your computer or if you want to store an image somewhere so that anyone can run that image then Ideally, you would store it in Docker Hub. There are other places to store as well, but in our case, we'll be storing in Docker Hub. We usually start from a Docker file where we write the definition of our overall application. So this Docker file has information about what operating system to use, which language you are using, and how the code you are going to use, and how to actually execute the code. Using this Docker file, we can create image, and we can later run the image to have the container running, which is the actual running application. So you create a Docker image using your Docker file, and Docker file can look something like this. So this basically, you start off from a pre-existing image. So because my application is written in Go, so I'm, I'm starting with a pre-existing Go image. Then I define my web directory, and then I copy whatever files I need to this location. So in my case, I just have one folder called CLI and inside that CLI, I have my main file. So I just need to copy this folder and then I'm doing a go install. So what this go install command does is it's basically builds and installs this main program and it stores the binary. So the binary is just an executable which you can run on a Linux environment and that will basically be our Go application. So at the first stage of build, I'm creating this binary. And at the second stage, all I'm doing is executing that binary. Okay, so in my second stage, I'm also starting from scratch. So I'm using this Alpine image and I'm defining my work directory here. And what I'm doing here is copying from the previous build, which is the first build here. So I'm copying the executable. So here the executable will be stored with the name server at this path, because that's what this go install command does. So I'm going to copy from the previous one to my current directory with the name binary. And I'm just doing a CMD which is my command and dot slash binary, which will basically just execute this. So this is how I, I can write a Docker file for this, for my application. Next step is to actually 
create the Docker image and I've put together a list of all the commands that one has to go through. So once you have written the Docker file, you can build the image using this Docker build command. So Docker build and you give a tag and the tag name can be basically whatever you want, but it needs to have a certain format if you are if you want to save it in a remote repository like docker hub so in my case i have my account in docker hub so you can easily create it uh, you just have to go to hub.docker.com and my username is this and that's why all my image names have to be my username followed by slash followed by whatever is the name of the image i want to give okay so this whole thing will be my image name so what I'm doing in the first command is I will build it, build the image, and then this dot stands for the fact that my Docker file is in my current folder. So once you have built it, then you need to push it. So Docker push followed by this exact same name. So using this push command, you can push your image to the remote, the remote registry, in which case it is Docker hub. So when you first do it, it will ask you for your Docker Hub credentials. So I have already done it. You can also create your uh, Docker Hub account at hub.docker.com. And here you can push your uh, Docker images. And whatever Docker images you push, they end up here. So this is how you can build and push the image. Then you can utilize that image in a deployment file in Kubernetes. So this is a typical deployment file. So where uh, you always have to give API version, then kind is deployment here. In metadata, you give names and labels. So in my case, the name is just simply Docker k as walkthrough. And I give a label, which is basically a key value pair. So in my case, it is app is my key. And my value here, I'm just simply reusing the same name. So my value in this case is this. So why is it important is because using this key value pair, a deployment can manage a particular set of ports. So under this spec, you basically write a selector under which you have this match levels. So you need to match levels which are of particular form, which means these levels of the deployment and the underlying pod have to be the same. So where is the information about the underlying pod? It is under this template. So under this template, you have this metadata and here you are also giving the exact same level as this deployment. Okay, so this is overall how you connect a deployment to a particular set of pods. And then you give specifications of a pod. Uh, a pod can have multiple containers. In my case, it's just one container and the container name I'm having it same as my service name and uh, the image is basically the image we created and pushed. So this image can be pulled from my remote Docker Hub repository, okay? And then I simply have a command which simply executes the binary. So if I run this deployment, then it will create a pod which will have this container that is running my image and this image is of my main program, okay? And once it is running, then you can't access it uh, just like that. You need a service, something called a Kubernetes service to expose this pod. So here is the definition of the service. So it's, it, it is sort of similar to the way you define in deployment, such that you need to have an API version, you have the kind of service and you have metadata where is where you have a name and the service is of type node port. So there are many service types. So node port, cluster IP, load balancer and ingress. And in this case it is node port, which means you can access it from outside of the Kubernetes cluster. And again, I'm assuming some basic knowledge on Kubernetes and Docker. This is mostly a walkthrough video, which can be a starting point for your projects. So here you have this keyword called selector. So the service has to know which ports it has to expose. So in this case, the selector, whatever you put on the selector, that data is utilized. So here 
the selector is also uh, also has a key value pair called app so the key is app and the value is the service name which is docker k this walkthrough which is the exact same value as given here okay so that the service exposes the right pod and also you need to give ports so in this case the node port value is basically the port at which you can access this service and this port container port which is running so in my case I have this port which has value of 10,000 and I'm using this port here and node port is the port at which you can access this so overall the steps are the first thing is you have your uh, go application in my case it's just one single file then you write a docker file to create an image the next step is to push the image to a, a remote repository next you have a deployment file to start the deployment and run the pod and next is to have a service file to expose the pod okay so all these commands i will go one by one here so first command is basically building the image i simply docker build it and as you can see it goes through all those uh, lines in docker file one by one Okay, next step is to push. Next, um, since I'm starting from scratch, I will just delete it, then I will redo it. So I'm going to apply this deployment file. Deployment is created and I can see kubectl get pods And here I can see the new pod is created. You can also create the service in a similar way kubectl apply minus f then service.yaml and now if you do kubectl get services It shows this node port service Having the same name as we gave here and it gives this uh, port so here even if somebody else created this service and you don't necessarily uh, have the file you can still look at the services here and see how to access that particular service so in my case i can do localhost colon 30900 to reach this pod which is basically an http server and here it is you can access this from outside of the cluster through a node port as you can see so one thing about node port is it has to be the value of this port itself it has to be within this range from 30,000 to 32,767 this is one iteration I just showed you so what if I want to make some changes here so let's say I want to make some changes so I added an extra line so then the usual workflow is you create the image from whatever is your updated file and then you again push the image then update your deployments and services so instead of doing all that manually i've just created this script file which does it so all i have to do is run the script file so bash commands.sh Okay, so now that it is done, let's refresh it. And here you can see the changed thing here. So this is a brief overview of how you can package your Go application, dockerize it and create an image, save the image somewhere and then write a deployment file and deploy it to a particular Kubernetes cluster. So in my case, I'm using Docker for desktop. So it is a local Kubernetes cluster. The procedure will be very similar if you're using a kubernetes cluster which is running on the cloud you just have to connect to the cloud and also we learned how you can expose a pod using a service so this is a very basic example this can act as a starting point for your projects as well if you like this video then feel free to like and subscribe thanks